Hey guys, this is MJ, who's truly locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is more imminent today than it was yesterday, one day closer to looking in our broom's face. Um, my voice is kind of shaky tonight, um, but I really did want to get on tonight and say hi to you guys and encourage you in the Lord. The Bible tells us to encourage one another as we see the day approaching. And that day is approaching like a freight train. What day? The day of the rapture. Jesus said um, that trumpet is gonna blow and he is gonna appear on those clouds. The dead in Christ are gonna rise first and we who are alive and remain are gonna be harpazo caught up with them in those clouds and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible, Bible tells us to comfort one another with those words, encourage one another as we see the day approaching. And that is precisely what I'm trying to do on this channel. So I know that we could get so very discouraged, you know, and the enemy has a lot of fiery darts and he knows us very well. He knows our soul very well. But here's something that God reminded me of. Not that I needed reminded, I guess I did. But Satan is a created being, guys, okay? God created him, all right? So he needs permission from God to do anything, all right? Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus Christ came to give life and life more abundantly. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man could come to the Father except through Jesus. Remember, Satan is a created being. They are not equal. All right? So it's not like good versus evil. God is all-powerful. God is omnipotent, omniscient. He is everywhere. He sees. He is all-knowing. So keep that in mind, okay? And let the joy of the Lord be our strength. I'm going to try to make it not too long tonight. Um, I don't know if I have too long. Um, we'll see if my phone rings. I'm on my lunch break. I'm a nurse on my lunch break. Um, I have been praying for you guys and your prodigal. And um, know that God is faithful always. Um, he is rarely early, but never late. <laughs> always on time. Okay, so... Know that our prayers and our supplications, he does hear. He hears our prayers. Anyway, I'm going to share from Behold, I Stand at the Door and Knock and a little bit from my own personal journal. But first, the very most important thing that you're going to hear tonight is the gospel. And if you're not saved, if you're not born of God's spirit, born again, I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't wait another second because the tribulation is being set up all around us. The Great Reset, uh, One World Government, One World Order, New World Order, aka the Great Reset, um, Cashless Society, One World Religion, Abu Dhabi, what the th it's happening right now, uh, and the Pope, so much is going on right now. Everything is like a domino effect right now right before our very eyes. And I mean, prophecy is unfolding at warp speed. We cannot keep up with it. We are that generation to see these things unfolding. And it blows my mind that we are that generation. So if your life has been hard, hello, that's probably why my life has. Anyway, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, on a serious note, um, the gospel is good news, all right? This world is bad news. There is nothing good in this world. Um, the good news is that Jesus Christ is our Savior, all right? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day, he rose again, according to Scripture. That is the simple gospel. I know religion complicates it, people complicate it, we complicate it with this here flesh. Um, Jesus had to crucify this here flesh, okay, because this flesh complicates things. Um, 
But the gospel is simple. God made it so very simple to be saved, to be born again, to be eternally secure in your salvation, a salvation that you didn't earn, that you can't lose, that Jesus Christ paid for on that cross. He paid a debt that he did not owe. It was our debt. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn this world, but that through him, we might all be saved. All right, so A is to simply admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, and we are all sinners in need of a Savior. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. B is to believe that Jesus Christ is this world's only Savior, and that he is your own personal Savior for the forgiveness of your own personal sins, and to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that Jesus died for your sins. Um, and see, call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not you might be saved, you will be saved eternally. You cannot lose your salvation because you did not purchase it. You didn't buy it. You didn't earn it. Okay, so there are people out there who believe they have left the traditional brick and mortar church when we are the church. Okay, so people who have gotten born again, born of God's spirit, that's what that simply means. Nicodemus said to Jesus, um, what do you mean getting born again? How can a man leave, get back into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That means we're all born sinners. We're all born into this world, into the flesh, okay? We're all born sinners. We're conceived in the condition called sin. So we need to be born again of Christ's righteousness, not our righteousness, to enter into the kingdom of God because the wages of sin is death. The penalty for our sin is death. And Jesus Christ paid that penalty on the cross. And he is currently seated at the right hand of the Father and is coming back soon and very soon to get us. So I would not wait, friend. If you are not born again, if you're not saved, just simply call upon the name of Jesus. He will save you eternally. And he will move in, the counselor. He's your best friend. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. He will speak to you. Um, there is no greater gift. There is no greater gift. Okay, so. It's been rough, hasn't it? Hasn't it been rough? So, I wanted to just share this. My spirit is grieved, Lord. And at what I see, I don't belong here. And I don't agree. My citizenship is in heaven. I want to go home. Lord Jesus, we await our blessed hope. We appeal to the throne. Come, Lord Jesus, rescue us from this evil system of lies. We can all see that it's a trap of Satan and his counterfeit alibis. The great reset is upon us. The beast system has arrived. The sound of the trumpet is imminent. Jesus is coming to finally get his bride. Only one way into heaven, my friend. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. He is the resurrection, good shepherd, and friend of the wounded heart. And once we are born again, eternally of his spirit, sealed and betrothed as his wife. Do you know him? We are the bride of Christ once we are sealed eternally. He is the groom. And we're getting ready to go to a wedding, the wedding supper of the lamb. The lamb who was slain from the foundations of this world. Okay, so if you don't know him, don't wait. Because we're not promised today. We're not even promised the next moment. So don't wait. Don't, you know, I hear people say sometimes, like, yeah, I'll wait till I'm older, you know, when I'm older. And, you know, I ask God to forgive me when I'm older. And Jesus Christ is the greatest gift. 
that any of us could ever hope for. And I don't understand why anyone, how anyone could live without him, especially now in these dark, dark, evil times. So call upon his name. So this is called Grandma's Mustard Seed. I know some of you have heard it before, but I wanted to share it for you newcomers. And I want to welcome all you newcomers. Um, know that I'm praying for you and your prodigal. And know that a prodigal is eternally born again, um, sealed, and God has his way of bringing us back. <laughs> and a few of us have to hit some brick walls before we do come back. So, all right. It wouldn't be possible to thank my grandma Myrna for her persistence on my behalf because her purpose on this earth was finished in 1993 when God called her home. I thought Jesus was a figment of her imagination as much as she talked about him, but a figment of her imagination. He certainly was not. I talk about him as much as she did now, so it's funny, huh? One day as we were taking a country drive, she made a point of asking Papa to stop the car. After he pulled the car over, she got out of the car, walked over the roadside, and yanked a plant out of the ground, extracting from that dirty mess a little tiny mustard seed. It was so important to her that I see the actual size of it. I can still recall the joy in her voice as she gently took my hand and made her bold proclamation of faith. Jojo, this is a tiny little mustard seed, and it's the smallest of all seeds, she said gazing deeper into my eyes. But Jesus said that all we need is this amount to receive a miracle. I remember that tiny seed rolling around in the palm of my hand as if it were just yesterday. Strangers driving by might have guessed that she had discovered gold by the childlike wonder radiating from her face. Personally, I couldn't fathom how something as ridiculous as a mustard seed necessitated Papa stopping the car, but it was just Grandma's way to make simple the complex. Despite my obvious disinterest, her tiny seed of faith had been firmly planted in the fertile soil of my youth. And in due season, that tiny seed would manifest a glorious resurrection indeed. Who knows, perhaps it was that very seed that compelled the Son of God to stop and turn around for me that day. Same Jesus I wanted nothing to do with, didn't deny me my time of need because Jesus understood that I was bleeding he was simply waiting for me to acknowledge that fact. He knew that deep down in my heart, I didn't mean to reject grandma's love. People do and say mean things when their hearts are bleeding. Jesus knows that too, because only he has the capacity to understand the true condition of the human heart. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Your mercy and truth have allowed me to rejoice in the very obstacles that propelled me so harshly to that ground. If, it hadn't, if I hadn't been in that ground at your feet, I would have forfeited the whole meaning to my life, and I dare imagine what might have happened in that dirt had you not turned around. Forgive me, Lord, for denying the immense purpose of your incorruptible seed. Lord of the harvest, deliver your seed. Tell you what, Jesus, if you don't mind, I'd like to request that this same seed be used once again for your glory. Grandma said that you're the Lord of the harvest, and this seed would produce miracles if we simply ask in faith. Lord, wouldn't it be miraculous if the world could actually see what I've seen? Wouldn't it be equally exciting to destroy this world's distorted perception of religion by helping them to see precisely who you are and why you came? Just as Grandma placed into my hand so many years ago that tiny seed of faith, I now place it confidently back into your hands, Lord of the harvest, to deliver it wherever you choose. Can you feel it rolling around in your hands, Lord? I realize that it must be small in your mighty hand, but you're not looking at the size of it, are you? What you see is that same childlike faith that I beheld at one time in the eyes of Grandma. Lord, do you realize that the substance of this offering, combined with the tiny piece of royalty I still hold within my hand, contains sufficient power and love to heal the whole wide world? I'll let go of my peace for them to behold your glory, Lord, because... I know that this garment was also ripped for them. Let them see it, please. Let them hold a piece. Open their eyes to see how costly this garment was for you and how very poor and lost they'll remain without it. Into your hands I now commit my tiny seed. Luke eight eleven. now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. 
Psalm 126, 6. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with their harvest. And, you know, once we come to Christ, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Our sins, past, present, and future, are forgiven. Remember that. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And everyone who is born again is in Christ Jesus. And we are blameless. Blameless. You shall know the answers, child, to the questions from within. In God's eyes, you are blameless, as if you'd never sinned. Take the faith I've given you and listen for my voice. I am the good shepherd, and my ways are not always your choice. If you care to live a blessed life beyond your fondest dreams, hear me out and listen, for the Spirit knows the means. Just love me and adore me, for you're the apple of my eye. I have great plans for you. Of this, I would not lie. The Father has pardoned all the shame within your past. Sin has lost its power. Your victory surely will last. You are now free to serve me without regret or fear. Just take my hand and know, child, that I am always here. So, expose the lies of the enemy. Tell your story and how you've been blessed. Only you know the pain of your prison. Speak, child. I'll do the rest. Warn my prodigals that these lies they've received are weapons shot straight from a demon. Declare that I'm still with them and that I can hear their tender heart screaming. Speak about my blood and assure them that I'm alive. Tell them that I am faithful and their broken soul I long to revive. Oh, please tell them, child, what I've done for you. Countless little lambs have been seduced and led astray. Point them back to me, dear one. Warn my prodigals who have walked away. Matthew 10, 27, what I tell you now in the darkness, shout abroad when daybreak comes. What I whisper in your ears, shout from the rooftops for all to hear. So, you know that we are in the days of Noah right now. And it's like Sodom and Gomorrah out there. You know, my heart is for the little children. And... I don't even really want to go into it. So anyone who knows me and knows this channel knows that that is my heart and my heart of hearts and the whole reason I do what I do. And you know, sin has progressed to the point of no return. Um, the cup of iniquity is full, all right? And judgment has come. There is no turning back. There is no turning back. People talk about revival. No. It'll come in the tribulation. That'll be the greatest revival of all, of all time. There is no revival coming. The tribulation is pending. So if you're not born again, you're not saved, I urge you to get born again and know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior for the forgiveness of your own personal sin. Because you owe a debt that you can't pay. And he paid a debt that he didn't know. All right, so I said I was going to make this short, but I did not make it short. Um, I'm at 19, 20 minutes, but I love you guys. Um, I'm praying for you, and just know that we walk by faith and not by sight. Don't be discouraged. Bible says don't grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. I got to go because my voice is obviously kind of, raspy here but I wanted to share one scripture with you that the Lord gave me tonight um, Philippians 4 4 through 9 okay this spoke to me tonight rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice let your gentleness okay gentleness <laughs> all right I was like Lord okay I gotta work on that be known to all men the Lord is at hand. You know, at hand means he's right here. That trumpet is about to blow. We're about to hear that trumpet. Ta, I'm excited. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, 
by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, everything that is bothering you, everything, bring it all to the throne and leave it there. And let the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. All right, keep on your spiritual armor. All right, because know that we're... <laughs> We wouldn't be called soldiers if we weren't expected to fight. All right. And um, Satan isn't hiding anymore. And he knows it. We know who he is. All right. Um, so next time, guys, keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. If I don't see you here, I'll see you in the air. God bless you guys. <laughs>